Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube page. This is JJ once again, we've got another Q&A. Essentially, uh, before the launch of the AMD 900 series chipset, we asked you guys out there on Facebook what you guys were interested in seeing. One of the top most requested questions out there was, what does SATA 6G performance really look like um, on the AMD 900 series chipset? In addition to that, we're gonna go branch out a little bit further and kind of just give you a little bit of compare and contrast as far as how SATA 6G looks, not just relation, to uh, the maximum potential. Um, while you guys didn't clarify in terms of whether you want to see mechanical and SSD, there's gonna be a big discrepancy in terms of the overall performance. Uh, with a mechanical hard drive, while that might SATA 6G capable, it doesn't really saturate the actual SATA 6G bus. So to best showcase its potential, we're gonna go ahead and actually hook up a SATA 6G based SSD. In addition to that, we're also gonna be taking a look at two SSDs uh, from two different generations, kind of the beginning generation of SSDs um, for the SATA 2 interface and show you kind of how the progression can, can exist between a SATA 2D based SSD and SATA 6D based SSD and a mechanical drive to kind of throw in there and kind of equal everything out all together. So let's go ahead and do a quick run through once again of our components that we have here on our test bed. We have our Demos Tech ROG edition uh, test bed table. We've got our Crosshair 5 Formula 990FX motherboard, which is going to be the platform for our SATA 6G testing. Now, part of the chipset itself are the uh, six SATA 6G ports that are actually on there, the board, or as you can see here, all these ports are actually natively SATA 6G, which also do offer RAID support. While we won't be diving into RAID here, we're going to be focusing at single volume. It is nice that the chipset does offer that functionality. One word of note that you do want to keep in mind is that some users uh, have asked questions on whether or not SATA 6G SSDs make sense on putting on older generational buses that might only be SATA 2 based, so a maximum of 300 megabytes. While you can definitely get the benefits of those SATA 6G based SSDs, you really won't get its full potential uh, without actually it being connected to a SATA 6G bus, so definitely keep that in mind. In addition to the Crosshair 5 formula, we also have our Corsair Vengeance based memory kit. This is a four DIMM, 16 gigabyte DDR3 1600 kit of memory. We have our ASUS GTX 570 DirectCU2 graphics card with super alloy power technology. We have our Corsair AX850 watt gold series PSU, gold meaning that has over a 90% paste efficiency, fully modular, so allowing us to only have the connections that we want when we're running our system. And because of the high level of efficiency, helping to keep our platform overall quiet. Powering the entire system CPU-wise, we have an uh, Thuban 1055T base CPU. And keeping everything nice and cold on that CPU front, we have Corsair's H60 uh, closed loop water cooling mechanism. Uh, with their microfin technology and the new redesigned radiator and that uh, fan that they, they include with the unit, we've got everything running really nice and cool, but also quiet. So that uh, rounds out our overall test bed. In terms of the actual storage devices, we've got a whole slew of different devices. We have a, a modern current generation two terabyte Seagate 7200 RPM SATA 6G uh, mechanical hard drive at 64 megs of cache. For our SATA 2 class uh, SSD, we have our Corsair P64 P series um, SSD that was based off of Samsung controller. Very solid performance overall but uh, now nowhere near as fast as one of the newer SSDs that we'll be testing, which is Corsair's F40 based SSD. This one's based off of Sandforce 2 controller, and this will represent pretty much the cutting edge in terms of overall speed that's available on the SATA 2 bus interface. And then for SATA 6 SSD based testing, we'll be utilizing OCZ's Vertex 3 um, SSD. So this pretty much showing us the absolute fastest performance that we can have available on the SSD front for SATA 6G connectivity. So as we can see here, we've gone ahead and already completed our benchmark runs for the mechanical hard drive. And uh, with the mechanical hard drive, we're going to see that overall that the peak of performance when it comes to sequential read is going to be uh, for the read speed about 141 megabytes and for the write speed about 138 so essentially about 140 and 140 now that's at the peak and that those results are also corroborated by our auto performance scores here which we can see uh, we're at 144 for the write and 148 for the read now we've also gone ahead and referenced our AS SSD 
benchmark to go ahead and allow us to see what general real world performance would look like in terms of ISO programs and game speed and the, and the time frame in terms of how they're going to relate to the speed that's offered for each one of those uh, types of transfers. Now one important thing to keep in mind is because of the way that a mechanical hard drive works and that it has platters and there, that it has a spindle, there's a cantilever that has to move around and, and data transfer is going to vary depending on the position that exists within inside the drive. We can see that better illustrated here by our ADA results. Here in the top left corner we can see that at the linear read beginning we have about 143 megabytes. At the linear read in the middle we have about 117 megabytes and at the linear read at the end we have about 67 megabytes. So we have quite a bit of a difference and our random read speed is about 94 megabytes. So overall almost about 100 megabytes and that's actually quite solid. You can get a very very good experience from a mechanical based hard drive but it's not going to be something that's consistent in terms of its overall performance where in comparison to an SSD where there's no moving parts um, you're going to get much more consistency um, regardless of quote unquote the location of the drive because there's no moving parts in its flash based memory. The other benefit is, is that because of the immediacy in terms of how flash works you're going to get much better overall access performance so when we're talking about whether it's just launching applications, boot times, um, general usage experience is going to be considerably improved. And that's illustrated by a benchmark which we're not actually going to even let finish up here because at the end of the day uh, 4K performance on mechanical hard drives is very 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 low. 4K represents um, kind of the most commonly set of files that the operating system are utilizing consistently within the background that help to define normal kind of usage level experience and this is where SSDs really shine regardless of where, whether you're looking at a SATA 2 class, later generation SATA 2 class or even a SATA uh, 6G based SSD. So keep that in mind. Um, we can see here for the 4K it's still running. Uh, it's been running for quite some time and it'll actually take a really long time for it to finish up those results. If you guys are interested in seeing what 4K performance looks like in a mechanical drive with more detailing of course you can check us out at ASUSROG dot com forward slash forums where we'll go more in depth into this but uh, we're going to go ahead now jump over to the next SSD and see what performance bump ups looks like when we step over to the first uh, SATA 2 based SSD with the P series 64 gig. Hello everybody we're back so we've gone ahead and now completed the next series of benchmarks on our P series uh, 64 gigabyte um, first generation SATA, SATA 2 SSD. And so we're going to go ahead and compare this quickly against the mechanical drive results and let's go ahead and bring those up. And we can see here on our left hand side we have the ADA performance scores and previously uh, we discussed about the inconsistency that occurs at the beginning, middle and end of the read speeds when you're dealing with mechanical volume and you can see that that's no longer the case here with the SSD. Our read speed at the beginning was 215 and the middle was 206 and at the end it was 206 with our re random read speed considerably higher than the mechanicals which was 95 megabytes now being 253 megabytes so we have a significantly higher level of performance and another key area was the access time the average access read, read time on the SSD was essentially 0.10 milliseconds and here on the mechanical drive it was 16.10 milliseconds so a huge difference in terms of, of that time frame. Um, now when looking at the general other benchmarks on the score, our peak performance here in ADO was uh, 163, 162 megabytes for the write and then 225 megabytes for the read performance. So significantly higher than the mechanical results which we can see once again here which was 144 megabytes and 148 megabytes. So pretty much across the board a nice improvement. And even looking at our kind of real world tests, when we take a look again at the ISO program and game copy benchmarks, we can see here that the speed was significantly increased. We go from 99 to 158, the program from 70 to 107, and the game from 83 to 171. So we saw a reduction across the board in terms of the time frame to complete those benchmarks as well. So next step up, we're going to go to pretty much the current generation Sandforce 2 class SSDs, which pretty much ride the rail in terms of maxing out almost the throughput uh, that's available to you on the normal SATA 2 bus, uh, which peaks out about 300 megabytes. So that'll be represented by a Corsair F40. And then from there, we'll get to the last guy, which you guys commented on in terms of wanting to see the SATA 6G based SSD. All right, everybody, we're back. We've gone ahead and completed 
some of the benchmarks here on the Corsair F40 Sand Force 2 drive. Uh, with most of these controllers uh, slightly varying on the size and a couple of the tweak, couple of little tweaks that can sometimes occur, you're usually going to be looking somewhere at about uh, 250 to about 280 megabytes for the read and about 250 to 280 megabytes for the write. Um, so let's go ahead and step on over now to ADA once again and we can see here that in our benchmarks they represent those kind of numbers. So we can see here for the linear, be uh, excuse me, the linear read in the beginning, the middle and the end uh, pretty much consistent across the board, 266 megabytes. That's a nice improvement over what we had with the uh, previous uh, P64 based SSD which was 215, 208, 206. So generally somewhere between about that uh, 205 to about 215 markers. So we saw a nice uptick there. And even in the random read speed, because this is a native SATA 6G controller, we're actually even able to see a little bit higher performance in the benchmarking of a random read of 348 um, once and then another time a random read of 352 as compared to the random read of 253 on the previous drive. Stepping over to Addo, uh, we can also see quite a bit of a jump up in performance as well. So with our previous maximum write performance being about 162 megabytes and our maximum read being about 225 megabytes. Now on this drive, we've gone ahead and stepped up to 255 megabytes for the write and 277 megabytes for the read. So now things are definitely starting to get quite exciting in terms of the overall performance that we're seeing as we move up the scale. So now we're gonna go ahead and see what SATA 6G SSD based devices are giving us in terms of the maximum performance. All right, so we've gone ahead and completed our SATA 6G testing. So we're going to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of an overview. One word to note is uh, for the AS SSD benchmark, you do want to keep in mind that right now uh, AMD is still doing some fine tuning and some optimization to the drivers. And so we're going to continue to see improvements. We definitely know that this SATA 6G is um, capable of uh, write speeds uh, that um, and get close you know, to 500 megabytes, if not over 500 megabytes in other benchmarks, as you'll see represented in the Addo bench. So just keep that in mind in terms of the anomaly you're going to see for the write speed. Um, but otherwise, we can really see the, the overall benefit of a SATA 6G based SSD when matched with a high performance board and interconnect, uh, such as the one here on this Crosshair 5. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the left hand side. We'll go ahead and pick our Corsair F40 up here on the right. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the Ada bench. And we can see here we've now gone up considerably with our beginning, middle, and end uh, starting off at 465 megabytes. The middle being 512 megabytes and the end uh, also being 512 megabytes. And the random read, 566 megabytes. So just, just massive levels in terms of the overall performance that we can see here on a SATA 6G based SSD. Now on the Corsair 40, we saw some really good performance numbers as well, but uh, they're definitely gonna be underneath that. So as you saw before, we were essentially at 263 and with our random at 352. So let's go ahead and uh, move over here in terms of uh, taking a look at the Addo. And with Addo, we can see that our Corsair F40 peaked out at essentially 255 megabytes for the write and 277 megabytes for the read. Now taking a look here, uh, all the way to the right, we have 465 megabytes for the write and 552 megabytes for the read. Just a massive, unprecedented level of performance when you talk about uh, what's available to you via the SATA 6G bus and a SATA 6G based SSD. Now taking a look at some of those real world benchmarks as well, as we can go ahead and take a look at the copy performance uh, for the ISO, the program in the game, and the ASSSD uh, copy benchmark. So we can see for the ISO, 3.3 seconds at 322 megabytes a second. And for the program, 7.05 seconds, and for the game, 3.64 seconds. So you can really see that you have a whole another level of performance. One thing that's not necessarily representative of here in the benchmarks, but something that you do want to always keep aware of, is that some SSDs, depending on their architecture and their design, are going to work better for different types of usage models, such as what's called incompressible data or non-incompressible data. So if you're somebody that maybe does a lot of photo work, uh, you do a lot of video, you do a lot of music, uh, the type of SSD and the type of setup that you might have might be a little bit different than somebody that's maybe uh, more interested um, and you know, working uh, with just web page browsing. 
um, you know, or just doing general usage or just looking for quick application load times. Uh, there's, there's a lot of complexities to it and these are things that we definitely follow up on and touch upon in our forums. So definitely feel free to leave us any comments here on the page if you're interested in more information. Um, or, as, or as always, check us out at asusrog.com forward slash forums. Thanks.